Um, sorry, I just had a button um, pop up. There we go. It's gone now. Don't know what it wanted. Uh, the district has over 40 schools and a budget of over $250 million. It is one that has an incredible amount of responsibility. I can say, though, it's one of the most rewarding roles that one can have. You are really contributing in the most important way to democracy. It's said that the, one of the best indicators of a robust democracy and a strong economy is the education system. We've seen that throughout the world. And I can say from the years I was first elected in 2011 as a trustee that Langley has an amazing educational system. Co-governance role is a complicated role, but one that, as I said earlier, is one of the most rewarding. I would like to wish each and every one of you the most success. And whoever gets to fill that seat, you will start on one of the most incredible journeys, impacting the lives of children and families in our communities, and one that you should be very, very thankful for. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done when I resigned to take over my role as MLA, which is so fulfilling. But I can say that the role of a trustee really does impact the well being of students and families in a way that's just hard to put into words. So, with that, good luck. I wish you the best. I will leave the meeting at this point and hope that you have an excellent um, all candidates meeting. And with that, I would like to introduce now uh, your amazing co hosts, two people that I'm proud to call friends, Brad Rickert and Candy Ashdown. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. My name is Brad Rickert. Uh, I'm a local Langley blogger. Um, actually, uh, Alex Joel uh, over there uh, called me a political narrator uh, earlier today, and I, I think I like that um, that definite that uh, um, not definition, but uh, that role. Um, the reason that we're here today is mainly because uh, there there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity due to COVID uh, for people of Langley to meet their candidates in person. Uh, and in fact, there wasn't much to uh, be able to meet them even on, on virtual, a virtual uh, platform like this. Sorry, I just gotta get my notes right there. Hang on. Um, there is a, a missing candidate here. Uh, he will be joining us later, Charlie Fox. Uh, he's just, uh, he is tending to um, uh, I believe a community meeting, uh, uh, another virtual meeting somewhere, but he will be joining us shortly. Uh, my kids, uh, I have uh, four kids that uh, have been in the school system in Langley for the last decade, uh, 10 years, and I have another 11 years to go. So I have a vested interest in the school system of Langley. That's the primary reason that I I'm, that I'm, uh, was asked uh, and, and said yes uh, to help out to organize this event. Uh, this event is not about uh, Brad Rickert or Candy Ashdown or Megan Beckman for that reason. This, this event is about uh, the seven candidates and, uh, and the future of Langley School System. Uh, I will now uh, introduce my colleague uh, to the left, well, my left on my screen, uh, Candy Ashdown. Thanks so much, Brad. And thanks, thanks as well for co-hosting this event with me. Um, and to MLA Dykeman for her opening remarks. And it's an honor to be here with all of you this evening. Thank you to all of the candidates for agreeing to participate in this event. Your participation is so important to ensure that voters are given the opportunity to get to know their candidates in the upcoming Board of Education election. A big thank you as well to those of you watching from home. My name is Candy Ashdown and I'm a former Langley Board of Education trustee, a realtor in the community, as well as I'm now a part-time constituency assistant to our new Langley East MLA, Megan Dykeman. You have to excuse my voice, I'm losing it this evening with my allergies, so it'll crackle. As a former trustee and Brookswood Secondary School grad, and also having two adult children who have recently graduated from Langley schools, public education is very near, near and dear to my heart. Some of you may also know that my mom served as a trustee on the Langley Board of Education for 12 years. Ensuring that every Langley student has the best education possible and equal opportunities is of utmost importance to me, regardless of where they live, what their economic status is, what learning challenges they may face, or what their gender or sexual orientation is. 
I believe that a strong education system is essential to the wellness of individuals and families, and also to create a healthy, democratic, and economically strong community. Public education in our Langley School District relies heavily on having a strong leadership at the Board of Education, which oversees the district. A board with excellent governance culture that operates in an environment of trust, respect, and professionalism is of the utmost importance as it sets the tone for the entire district. We need trustees who are willing to put any personal agendas aside and work together to represent all stakeholders equally. I would like to once again thank all of our candidates. Thank you all for being here. And um, I would like to introduce you all one by one. And when I say your name, put your put your hand up. I guess your names are probably showing on the screens. I'm not sure how it how it shows on Facebook, but um, uh, and as as Brad mentioned, Charlie Fox will be joining us shortly as soon as he's finished his other meeting. So in no particular order, um, I would like to introduce. Holly Dickinson, Alex Joel, Stacy Wakelin, Joel Newfeld, Phyllis Hutner, and last but not least, Grant Gilmore. And on a side note, we found out that it is Grant and his wife's anniversary today, and that they moved their dinner plans to another day. So wanted to thank you for that grant that you were able to make the meeting and happy anniversary to you both and thank you for joining us. And now over to you, Brad, for candidate introductions. Thank you, Candy. Actually, I think uh, Charlie Fox did just uh, join us during your introduction. So he's waving hey, there. Charlie. Here's Charlie. Got here early, good. So the itinerary for the evening yeah, after these introductions will be that uh, each candidate will have two minutes to introduce themselves, uh, introduce maybe some important things about their platform. Um, really, we kind of just gave each candidate uh, a blank slate to, for how they want to introduce themselves for those two minutes. Um, then we will lead into some general candidates for all questions. There will be, uh, I believe, uh, we selected four questions. These questions we came from pre-submitted questions that people from around Facebook, social media uh, sent to us at talklangley.com. Then we'll have some specific questions for each candidate. The specific questions, um, there will be uh, two for each candidate. Each candidate will be given approximately 90 seconds to answer the specific questions. And then to close, each candidate will have one minute to make closing remarks. So we were going, I just want to maybe check in with the people on Facebook. I'm gonna give us a little bit of time just to make sure that people are uh, able to see us. Uh, we maybe should have done that a little bit earlier. I do see that we have uh, you know, about 73 live viewers. Uh, feel free to please comment on this video uh, wherever you're searching from. Uh, we will see uh, maybe where you're viewing from, uh, what neighborhood, if you want to say that, uh, maybe um, whether you've, um, uh, what are the notes here? Um, um, whether you're planning on voting uh, in the advanced polls or in the, in the general poll, uh, just looking for any bit of engagement just so we can kind of test the system here. And there is a 30, uh, sorry, uh, Charlie, just so we let them know that there's a 30 second, 30 second leg uh, between uh, our Zoom meeting and the Facebook Live meeting. I got a few likes. I don't see any comments yet. Hopefully people are able to comment. Maybe they're just shy. All right, well, for the sake of time, we will move on. Maybe let's get straight into the questions. Oh, no, sorry, the candidate introductions. 
we have chosen to do the candidate introductions, I believe in order of um, how they show up in the ballot box, but we did shift that around just because we thought Charlie might be a little bit late. But we will start with uh, Joel Newfelt. Joel Newfelt, would you please, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, provide a two minute introduction. I hope that doesn't count trying to unmute myself. So for those of you that know me, you most likely know my wife, Megan, and my daughter, Brinley. Um, without their support, I would not be here today. Um, They're both my inspiration to always give 100%. In 2009, Megan and I started a business and together we joined our first committee, which was the Canadian Cancer Society Relay for Life. Since then, I've worked on multiple committees, um, one being the Langley Hospice Society and the Langley Animal Protection Society. Um, 2013, we lost our son, but through that tragedy, we were able to come together uh, stronger and more resilient. I have 11 years of service as a first responder, uh, five years in the fire department and six years with BC Ambulance. As a firefighter, I am so blessed to be able to both work um, in my community, giving back on and off the job. Uh, through our charitable society, I am able to do help deliver um, nutritional breakfasts and snacks to over 110 schools in Surrey. And I'm the chair of Ignited Dream, which is a scholarship designed for students who've overcome an adversity in their life um, and are pursuing post-secondary education. I'm so excited to run as a school trustee in Langley I want to bring positive energy and really bring a, a fresh set of eyes to the issues that the school district has faced for years. I believe that we need to raise the school site acquisition charge now and work with the uh, township of Langley and uh, making sure that we ensure there's land for schools in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Holly Dickinson. Oh. Un unmute yourself first. I'm on it. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Holly. Um, I am a passionate educator and I've enjoyed eight years working in the Surrey School District as an elementary school teacher. I'm running for trustee to ensure that our education system continues to be inclusive, innovative, offer choice, and provide a safe and secure environment for generations to come. My reasons for running for the school board are simple. I want to serve my community and make a positive impact in the lives of as many children and families as possible. I'm ready to serve and I believe that the board needs an energetic team player with a fresh voice, someone who is in touch with the needs of the current conditions. I feel that my ability to work collaboratively by using solution-based discussions would be an asset. I don't have any political affiliations or special interest group agendas to push. I'm not using this campaign to launch into other political arenas. I believe education is a nonpartisan affair. I'm a clean slate, eager and able to work with all of Langley's trustees, council members and staff. I've worked and lived in this community for 21 years. I'm a home, homegrown product of the K-12 Langley school system. I have degrees in psychology and education. I bring to the table a unique blend of expertise, a previous career in human resources, working with unionized employees combined with my current experience working as a member of a union in education helps me examine issues from multiple points of view. I've served on my strata council since 2015, five of those years serving as president. As president, I've established, maintained and balanced a $1.1 million budget. I have worked hard to increase communications and proactively maintain the housing for our community. Volunteering has been a passion of mine for over 25 years. I started volunteering in high school as a Langley girls youth soccer coach. And since then I've coached a variety of sports, led numerous leadership groups, planned Terry Fox runs, youth camping trips, organized Christmas hampers for local families and ran two successful cancer fundraisers. I look forward to answering the questions tonight and invite anyone who would like to engage in further dialogue to please get in contact with me. I take pride in maintaining and making sure that our schools are safe for all students. I spent countless hours advocating for students and their mental health, social, emotional Holly? learning. Holly? Yep. Are we Great. Two minutes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Great. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Alex Joel. Usually I take this opportunity in the introductions to drive home my platform, but I'm going to try something a little different this time because it's possible not everyone in Langley already knows who I am. Uh, school board is a very important position to me because my son is in the public school system. He's about halfway through his K-12 journey, and I have a pretty good idea of what the system is capable of, and now I have a good expectation of what we're looking for going forward for his, his education. Uh, I'm not a teacher, I'm not an educator, but uh, I educate my own way. Uh, my passion is coaching roller hockey and ball hockey when the government lets us. And that's the way that I like to see children grow and develop. Uh, not everything is done in the classroom. And it's important that schools are in class right now. And I appreciate that about what British Columbia has done uh, in comparison to a lot of parts of North America. Uh, but really, there are so many different aspects to a child's ed education. Uh, I've helped in the schools too. I was the vice president of the school PAC one year, and although I wouldn't consider myself outstanding at that role, I would say as volunteer number one, I hit it out of the park. Uh, whether the job was slicing onions or whether it was you know, volunteering at sports day or stuffing fundraising envelopes, I stepped up to that challenge and I thrived under the leadership of others. So I do know how to work well under others, However, in my career, I do manage people. Uh, I manage a department that brings in $13 million a year in revenue. Uh, and also, I'm a trained journalist, so I have a pretty good idea on how to remain unbiased and how to ask hard questions. So I'm hoping that voters will choose me, Alex Joel, on February 27th or before, because I- That's two minutes, Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Alex, sorry. Grant Gilmore, your two minutes. Unmute. There we go. Hi, I'm Grant Gilmore. I've been a Langley resident since 1997. I have a real love for learning and sharing that learning. And the evidence for that is the amount of education I have. I opened Gilmore Group CPA in 1994 and semi-retired in 2020. I have four children graduated from three different high schools in Langley School District. I believe each school serves a child differently. It's okay to find the best fit for your child. I've been married for 25 years, and today is the anniversary of our first date 27 years ago. My wife graciously, graciously allowed me to postpone our celebration. I was an active member of Rotary from 1995 to 2015, and during that time I ran the Dictionary Project that delivered dictionaries to grade four students in Langley. Over those 20 years, we delivered 25,000 dictionaries. People ask about the relevance of dictionaries today, and they are relevant. The best thing is they're offline and not influenced by advertising. They teach research skills, and they teach the joy of finding something new. For example, the word pivot. Did you guys know two years ago you're going to use that word so much this year? I believe strongly in Langley as a community and have done many projects for Langley through Rotary, Scouting, and my company. And I'm not really a politician, but I love democracy, Canada, and what democracy can do in Canada. People who know me well will know I always reply to the question, how are you, with excellent and very happy I live in Canada. For the record, I have not left British Columbia since January 2020, that being important to know these days. I'm looking forward to bringing my leadership skills and business skills to the new goal of making the school system stronger. I fully expect we are entering a decade of tight budgets. 15 seconds. And continuing change will bring new costs for schools and also new opportunities. Who would have predicted we would have gone to online learning two years ago? It. Thank you, Grant. Sorry, guys, my cards are not working. I had cards printed out, but I have a different <laughs> background <laughs> and the cards are not working. So I'll just have to interrupt and let you know it's almost time. Sorry. Uh, Stacy Wakeland. 
Oh, unmute yourself. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for hosting tonight as well. I am honored to live and work on the traditional unceded lands of the Kwantlen, Keitsi, Matsqui, and Semiamu First Nations. My name is Stacy Wakelin and I assist in the operation of my family's small business. I'm a public education advocate and a longtime community leader and organizer. I believe in engagement with the community, standing up and showing leadership when I see the need, and demonstrating equity in all that I do. I have two teens in the Langley Public School System. This is what I bring to the table. I invite you to go to my website, stacywakeland.com, to get more information about my experience and my platform. As a new trustee, I would be joining the table at a time when the current budget is being finalized. The reality is that our district is focused on supporting students and staff through a pandemic recovery period with all of the complexities that that entails. What promises can I make? For parents struggling to find supports for your child within the district, I will be an advocate at the district and provincial level to ensure that we are meeting the diverse needs of students. I will always prioritize the well being of students, teachers, and all staff. I will be a strong voice for those communities that need new schools and to advocate for new school builds that account for future growth. I am personally committed to reconciliation and will support this work within the district. There is already incredible work being done by our Aboriginal education program and especially the ISDL committee. This district must remain focused on anti-racism work and ensuring our schools are a safe space for all students. I'm committed to serving our district in the long term. I'm grateful to, I'm grateful for all that um, are responsible for the journey my kids have had within within the district. And I look forward to an opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Charlie Fox. Okay. You ready? Ready when you are. Oh, hi, okay. Charlie Fox, I'm running for uh, school trustee. I'd like to acknowledge the fact that we're on the unceded territory of the Masque, Kwantlen, Casey, and Semiamo First Nations. I've lived in uh, Langley for over 47 and a half years. 33 and a half years of that was spent as a teacher and administrator in the school district. My wife was a teacher and a high school counselor. I uh, had two children go through the education system, K to 12, both off on careers. And my daughter is presently employed in the school district as a vice principal in elementary. Uh, we have two grandchildren that live on our property in our bubble and we're very involved in their education uh, and dropping them off and picking them up at school almost on a daily basis to assist. Uh, I have a master's in education administration, uh, which I attained very early in my career. Uh, my roots go deep in the community, go way back into the uh, mid seventies very involved in a variety of different uh, community groups. Mostly my passion for working with youth and children has been evident in my uh, working and families uh, working in the community. I've got a great deal of governance experience with the boards I've sat on. I believe that in education, we need to put student learning first and foremost. I believe that we need to focus on the basics of literacy, numeracy and, and uh, technology in preparing students, not only for the daily rigor of school, but for post-secondary, so that we can encourage our students to move on. I believe we need to do that in an enriching and safe and inclusive environment for everyone, regardless of ethnicity, race, socioeconomic class, sexual orientation, or any of the variables that we have to deal with. Uh, I'm focused seconds, on, Charlie. on supporting programs that prepare our students to live beyond the grade school grades and move into a good functional career post-secondary. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Phyllis Sepner, you're up. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Phyllis Hepner, and I'm a Langley resident for over 36 years. I'm an experienced teacher with private tutoring class instruction from infant to adult. I know how to relate to students and to parents and to my employed teachers. I'm a successful business owner and entrepreneur for many years. I'm able to balance three priorities, 
to inspire each student to want to learn, to make sure each parent is getting value for the dollar, and to make sure each pay teacher is well paid and happy. All the while watching the bottom line of the business and balancing the budget. Does that sound like a school board to you? I know how to listen. I'm open to listening and learning from opposing views. Everyone has something to teach me. I'm sensitive to the felt needs of those who require my advocacy. I know how to collaborate. After all, I've played in a jazz band for many years. I can take an upfront role and solo when appropriate, but I'm happy to take on a supporting role as well while others shine. I'm not egocentric. I believe in and cherish the intrinsic value of each student, each parent, each teacher, each support worker, and also each Langley taxpayer. I believe in the nuclear family as the basic foundation of society, and I seek to keep family bonds strong wherever I can have an influence. I believe in the value of teaching students, not what to think, but rather how to think. These are our future leaders in our uh, country, so we want them to be independent thinkers. My priority is that students have a safe and nurturing environment which generates and inspires a positive interest in learning. My overriding goal is that our kids become informed, skilled, self-reliant future citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. We're going to be moving into the general questions, the four general questions at this point. Um, what we have done is we drew lots to see uh, who's going to go first, and then we will be rotating in order. Uh, so Candy will be asking the first question, and uh, Holly will be the first up, followed by Alex and Grant. Great. Thank you. So the first question is, what key quality or strength differenti differentiates you from other candidates? Sorry, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry about, okay. Okay, I'll start again. <laughs> what key quality or strength differentiates you from the other candidates running in this by-election? What do you see as a weakness or challenge you may have? And we'll start with Holly. Okay. Um, I think my key strength is my ability to work with others in a collaborative way. Um, I have been serving on my condo strata board for six years now. Um, and in the last five years, I've been president. And in being president, I was able to set the tone of a fun place to be and for people to want to be there and want to work together. And but while still getting a lot of stuff done. And I feel like that's something that the board really needs right now. I feel that they need somebody that is collaborative and has that energy about them to bring to the table during this 18 month term so that we can keep working on everything that they've got going on, which is a, a lot of amazing things and not bring any conflict or issues or personal troubles to the board. Um, as a weakness, coming in, um, it's going to be learning how to say no to joining every committee. Um, I have, this is my life. Education is my life. This is where I'll be for the rest of my life. And so I'm passionate about everything to do with education. So it's going to be learning how to truly focus that and really hone in on one specific or a few different specific areas and boards okay. that I can join. So thank you. Yeah. Holly. And Next, um, Alex, please. So what, one of my strengths is I have an eye on all levels of government. Uh, as some people know, I have run at every single level uh, within the last five and a half years living in Langley. So I've put a lot of work into learning what each level of government can offer to the constituents. Uh, I also know that we need someone who's going to stand up for all stakeholders, not just special interest groups. Uh, I would say one of my weaknesses is that I'm still learning throughout this process. Well, even at the beginning of this process, before I decided to run, I had to do my homework to make sure that school trustee was a position where I felt that I could make a difference the way I wanted to uh, influence. However, there is still so much to learn, and I would say, while that is a weakness, it's also a strength in that I'm willing to listen to all people and all ideas. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next, Grant, please. Hold on. Wait. Just got to find the unmute. There we oh. go. <laughs> All right, so what quality of strengths? I'm I'm an accountant. And he goes, that's a really boring thing to do. I think it's a really important thing to do, actually. And I think it's a view that I, the board actually needs is someone who understands the numbers. Not that they don't understand the numbers, but it's, it's through and through. Measurement is part of what I do. So there's my key strength. With that comes the key weakness, balancing results that are expected with the actually what's capable of being done with what you have. And I have always tried to push a square peg into a round hole and actually manage to get results many of those times. And I think the board actually needs that because we're going into a tough time. I don't know what the rest of you think, but we got 10 years of tight budgets ahead of us. We got to be ready for that. Thank you. Next, Stacy, please. So I would definitely say that um, some of my strengths would be my community advocacy experience, my volunteerism, which I do sit on two boards um, in the community. And I think that that is valuable experience. I have ad advocated for our school district. I have kids that are currently attending school here. So those are all definitely strengths. Um, I'm also a collaborator. I'm a bridge builder. And I know from watching meetings that there has been tension in the past. And I think that that will also be a challenge. And it will also, um, I would be the perfect addition to the team just because of my natural collaborative ability. So I think um, it's kind of a double edged sword there. It's always a challenge to be the new kid on the block, but I am definitely up for the challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Phyllis, please. Thank you for that question. Well, strengths. I have, I, uh, I'm a quick thinker and I'm able to assimilate new ideas quickly into the problem solving. I love problem solving. I like to dig in and do something that actually works, not just on paper, but in reality. I've been a student of human society for a long time, just look just a, in my own private studies. What makes things work? What doesn't make things work? What harms society and what helps society? So those ideas are there and, and I'm always willing to learn something new. I also noticed that there's a bit of instability on the board and I feel like I would really bring stability. I have the ability to get along with people. I have met almost every trustee and I really would like to work with those people. I admire them and I had great conversations with them. So I can see myself working together to for a common goal. And I see ahead that COVID will be a, a ongoing flexibility needing One minute, <laughs> problem Paula. solving thing. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Charlie please. We can't hear you, Charlie. <laughs> Mute me. Okay, there we go. Sorry, apologize. There you are. Uh, strengths. Uh, my educational background, uh, master's degree in educational administration, uh, and my experience in the system uh, has has been a huge, uh, I think, asset. Um, I tend to be a problem solver. I tend to work through problems. I tend to be advocate for solving problems, a listener, and a, and a, and working. Uh, towards solutions, commitment. I think I've uh, shown that through my advocacy, through my work in the community, and also uh, my experience with governance and uh, the energy and passion I, I bring to that particular aspect of moving uh, forward with, with situations. A weakness, I tend to, and I'll be honest, I call a spade a spade. And uh, yeah, that runs you into problems sometimes, but sometimes I believe that that uh, has to be done. Uh, and some people don't like it. That's fine. Some pe uh, people do that back to me. And uh, I think in a way, it's a constructive thing. Uh, but some people, it, it obviously isn't necessarily. But uh, I think that sometimes... One minute, Charlie. 
<clears throat> Thank you. Uh, last but not least, Joel, please. I'm going to bring in, I would bring a new perspective to the board. Uh, as a firefighter, uh, I'm on the street. I see inequalities um, in schools. I see inequalities in homes. And I just want to be able to create inclusive uh, classrooms where no one is left behind. As far as a weakness, I'm not a politician. So I don't have all the right answers. And honestly, after watching everybody's great intros, I didn't have a script with me, which I probably should have. <laughs> and that's Thank it. you. That's... Okay. All right. So we're moving on to the next question. So over to you, Brad. Thank you. Great answers. So the second question, we are going to provide 90 seconds for these, for these answers, um, just because we're running a little bit early, which is good. So the second question is, what is one specific way you can advocate for, for diversity and inclusion in your role as a school board trustee? I'm going to start with Alex, followed by Grant and Stacy on this one. So I'll give you a moment. And again, the question is, what is one speci specific way you can advocate for diversity and inclusion in your role as a school board trustee? Alex, you're up. This is not my strength, but I do believe that every student deserves the same educational opportunities. Uh, I believe every student should feel safe at school. Otherwise, how are they going to be engaged and how are they gonna get everything out of their full educational experience? One specific thing I would do is I would work to fix bullying in schools. I am probably the 419th millionth person to say that, but uh, we really definitely need to bring teeth to the uh, legislation uh, at our disposal. We need to crack down on it uh, on physical violence. We need to have a good uh, relationship with the police department and we need to use the current harassment uh, and uh, harassment laws that we have at our disposal. And that's really the best way is that we can help with inclusion and diversity is to make sure that everybody feels like they belong at school and they feel safe. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Grant, you're next. All right. So I've been attending school board meetings and I think we already have some very strong voices for diversity and inclusion on the school board. So I don't think my role is to go and make it stronger that way. I think my role is to make it effective. There's a big difference between saying you're gonna do something and getting it done. And that's my experience is how to make that, that bridge between the policy statement and the actual effectiveness. So there's some, a lot of great ideas and some great leadership already. I'm just gonna help it get further. That's, that's my way of uh, solving inclusion and diversity at our school board. Thank you, Grant. Stacy. Oh, oh, Stacy, you're unmuted. Stacy, you need uh, you're muted. There you go. Okay, now it's it's. Can I just also clarify when we're speaking of diversity and inclusion? Are we speaking about? Um, supporting different groups of people or diverse learning needs? I think you take your definition for what you, what you feel okay. that is necessary. Okay, um, definitely I agree with what Grant has said. There is a lot, of, a lot of good work that's happening. I would just really like to support it um, going further. And I think it's really important even, there are a million different things we can do. I think language is really important, especially if we're referring to diversity and inclusion as special interest groups, equality and support and inclusion should be, it shouldn't be considered a special interest. Um, I would also really try to make sure that we have people with lived experiences leading 
leading us in this work. So when we have committees on anti-racism that we have people of color influencing the conversation and, and guiding us in that. So having those, those voices be a part of the very important work that needs to happen and that is happening, I think that is critical. Often we're, you know, people try to be helpful and we're doing what we believe is helpful. We need to have those people with lived experiences at the table for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Phyllis, you're next on this one. Thank you. Well, I grew up in a family where my father's goal and mission in life was to help the disadvantaged and the indigenous people of, of, our, of the community. And so I grew up with a heart for the hurting and a heart for the people that were disadvantaged. The answer is love and acceptance, period, for every single person, no matter what their background, no matter what their any of their attributes or any of their decisions. We love people. I'm totally against bullying wherever it occurs and we need to use whatever tools we can to, to end that. And we need to also understand that children, it's been proven that children accept each other until they're trained to not. <laughs> so we have to be careful that we don't create problems that aren't already there. Thank you, Phyllis. Charlie, you're next. Thank you, thanks for the question. One of the most important aspects of being a trustee is to develop a strategic plan. This is a really, really critically important document and it's the one piece of work that as a trustee, you have to take the most seriously because it defines policy programs and initiatives. So when we talk about advocacy for inclusivity, diversity and so on, the most important document and the most important outcome is the strategic plan. And that has to be written into policy. And when a, when a trustee makes a decision about how that will look, what those policies will look like, they have to be able to uh, look, set the dollars aside to fund that, to make sure there's staffing to fund that, to make sure that the programs meet all the ministry needs and the educational needs of students. So the strategic plan is really what is the core of that as a trustee, developing that in an effective, manner and inclusive of input from the stakeholder groups. Thank you, Charlie. Joel, you're next. So we have great language with the policy 7200 anti-harassment and anti-discrimination. Um, what I would bring and what I believe uh, how I can for inclusive schools and anti-bullying is to listen to the people that have lived the experience. I've met a few people along my campaign trail. Uh, I've posted about it on social media and I've had a lot of people reach out to me um, sharing their same experiences. So my plan is to listen to those and learn from what has worked for them um, to uh, find a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Holly. Okay, um, so specific ways for inclusion and diversity. This is my life passion is everything inclusivity and diversity. Um, so there's a few different things and different angles you can look at it for, but if I was to advocate for one thing as a trustee, it would be making sure that our budget is there for the support staff that we need to be able to include and have diversity. So that would be things like making sure that we have an adequate amount of counselors that are able to help walk all the students who are facing difficulties because they are different to walk them through the traumas that they've experienced. It would be having the budget to have the SEAs there to be able to make meaningful inclusion in the classrooms without having the SEAs there that are able to help all of these students, we aren't able to be meaningful in our ability to include and celebrate their diversity and their strengths. So we really need to look at the budget part of things and make sure that the financing there is there for the staff to be able to help all of these students to make sure that they are included. 
Thank you, Holly. That concludes question two, and I will Candy for question three. Thank you. Okay, question three. And you'll have 90 seconds as well for this because I believe we're still running okay for time. Are we? Yeah, okay. So question three, the role of a school trustee is prescribed in the school act. Please tell us what your roles and responsibilities would be as a school trustee. Um, first up is Grant, please. Wow, I barely finished writing the question. <laughs> You want me right, to say so, it again? I can say it again. Sure. I'll okay. do the Toastmasters thing. Say the question again. I can do that. Okay. The role of a school trustee is prescribed in the school act. Please tell us what your roles and responsibilities would be as a school trustee. Ah, so you want me to read back the act. No, that's never effective. What... <laughs> The roles and responsibilities of the school trustee, in my view, is getting the most out of the least, because basically the school board and the, the board of education actually gets a prescribed amount of expenses and a prescribed amount of revenue. And out of that, it has to squeeze education for all the students in the school district. So the role of the school trustee is to make that all fit together. So some of it is go advocate for more money, and some of it is make the money go further, and some of it is just make the people do a, be more effective than what they're doing with what they have. So the school trustee is a leadership role to get the most out of the least. Thank you, Grant. Okay, Stacy, you're up next, please. Okay, so boards are responsible for developing and maintaining a culture of student learning through the development of the strategic plan, passing a budget, setting policy, and always taking into account the needs and aspirations of the local community. And in my heart, I believe all of those things are true. And from a personal perspective, the most important is to ensure that students, their families, and all staff are always more than just numbers on a spreadsheet. I know fiscal responsibility is of utmost importance, but it's also important to engage with those within the district and those that we are there to serve as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Phyllis, please. Thank you. The role of the school board is to oversee the education of 23,000 students in Langley. That's complicated because, as was already pointed out, there's a set amount of money that comes in uh, based on the number of students, and then the budget has to be spent on a firm and set amount of wages that because the all the most of the wages are union wages, so that is set. So the difference, the, the bit that we have to play with, as was already stated, must be allocated properly and, and for the best of the, all of the individuals. These are individuals that we're dealing with, teachers, students, parents, we can't just group them together. And so we have to make sure that we're taking care of individuals and listening, listening well to what the problems are out there. Thank you, Phyllis. Next up, we have Charlie, please. Thank you. Um, I believe the role of the uh, and responsibility of the school trustee is wrapped up in basically three words, plan, advocate, and engage. So as a, as a trustee, the strategic plan is a really critical document. It outlines policy, initiatives, programs, and so on that you want to accomplish as a board of school trustees for a period of time. The second piece is the capital plan. That outlines and is delivered to the ministry and the treasury board is a plan for capital engagement in the school district to meet the growing needs of a school district. And also the uh, when in situations like we're in, where you have student population declining. So that has to be built into a capital plan. And the third plan is the budget plan. What's that look like? Engage is engaging our partner groups. 
the LTA, QP, DPAC, the community as a whole, the business community. We need to engage them in each one of those steps so that they are part of the discussion and they're part of the outcome. They have ownership. And the last one is advocacy. As a trustee, I have to advocate. I have to advocate for the strategic plan, the capital plan, and the budget to whatever agencies, groups, or uh, ministries are necessary, because that's what we want as a community, and we have to be that advocate to make sure they understand why and they buy into what we are as a as a board of trustees will uh, be that's working for. That's seconds, Charlie. Thank yep. you. Okay, next up we have Joel, please. Yeah, so <clears throat> as a board of trust, uh, sort of board of education, uh, it's important to connect the district goals, strategic planning and finances. But for me personally, it's about making decisions based on student success. Um, my strong suit is building relationships with the students, with the parents, the teachers, support staff, and the administration, other trustees, Ministry of Education, and other township staff and mayor and council. I think that this is imperative to get done what is need to get done. And I feel that's, again, raising our school site acquisition charges and working together to get land for schools in Willoughby and in Brookswood when that development starts. Thank you. Next up, Holly, please. Okay, so I believe the role of a trustee is to be the leadership and set the tone for everything that encompasses the Langley School District. From there, like Charlie, I have three words. Um, the three that came to mind for me were budget, listen, and lobby. So within viewing the strategic plan, you need to make sure that there is the budget there to support the things in that plan. If we don't have the staff that's necessary um, to implement the plan, then it all is just tokenism and people saying things for the sake of saying things. We have to have the budget there to support and have the staff in the building to support all of our students. Um, so that's a super important thing is to make sure the strategic plan actually is reflected in the budget. Um, the other thing is that we need to listen. So we need to listen to our parents, our community and staff and make sure that they are all being heard and we are advocating for all of their needs. And the last bit is lobby. We need to be able to go to the Ministry of Education. We need to be able to work with our township and city um, town councils here. We need to be able to work with all those people and lobby to get the best interests and the needs of our students across to those people. We need to be able to tell them that this is what we need and we need it now. And, and to work with them, but do it in a respectful way. Thank you. And Nick, <clears throat> my goodness, I'm sorry about my voice. And next up, Alex, please. Going last, I have the, uh, the benefit of piggybacking on all these great answers, but the best I believe was Charlie Fox's answer. I'm hoping I can add to that with my 90 seconds. Uh, we need to hold staff accountable financially, but also make sure that we're implementing the plans, the programs that are uh, we want to put in place with our strat plan. Uh, definitely, uh, we need to make sure we're not wasteful of dollars, but also we have to make sure we're not missing any opportunities. Uh, secondly, we have to make sure nobody falls through the cracks. We need to empower our schools to make decisions that are very specific to their diverse set of students. Every school and every community is different. And finally, we need to make sure that we are creating the good future stewards of our community. Uh, we need to prepare them as best we can for life after school, because otherwise it's just been daycare. Thank you. Thank you. Now over to you, Brad, for the next question. Thank you, Candy. Next question is, if elected, how do you foresee your relationship with other trustees on the board and how would you deal with different personalities and opinions? We'll start with Stacy, on to Phyllis and Charlie. So again, I will repeat the question. If elected, how do you foresee your relationship with other trustees on the board and how would you deal with different personalities and opinions? 
So I am fortunate to know most of the trustees sitting at the table. I believe what is needed is someone to come on as a collaborator, someone that is capable of handling tough situations in a respectful way. And I definitely have um, learned those skills over the years. Um, I foresee no problem there. I, I believe that we have a great group sitting at that table and I'm ready to get to work with them. And I believe at the end of the day, the most important aspect is just focusing on our common goal, and that is supporting the district. So I think if we can all keep that in mind, um, I've definitely had some really difficult uh, conversations over the years. Anytime you are involved in advocating um, for tough conversations in the community, you end up, end up having some very valuable learning experiences. And I'm not afraid to share my opinion. And I'm also very willing and um, able to hear from others as well. And I think it's at the end of the day, we all are there for the same reason. And we all have very valuable skills to bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Phyllis. Yes, thank you. As I said in my opening remarks, I've met most of the trustees and would really look forward to working with them. I have high respect and high regard. So that is not a problem. I think we have to be careful that we maintain the relevance of a school board. School boards are not common in the Eastern Canada, and we need to know that we need to keep our school board. You are best governed at the closest level to you. If you have a concern, do you want to call Ottawa, Victoria, or do you want to call your friendly neighborhood Langley School Trustee? We must preserve this level of governance. In order to do that, the board must be a working board. We can't just have people entering in the board as a stepping stone for other positions that they're looking for. They need to want to be here for the long term. So the board must tackle the issues and not pump them off to something else. So I would want to work with people in a true working board to keep the school board relevant so we don't lose this level of government. Thank you, Phyllis. Charlie. Thank you. Um, I don't foresee an issue working with the people on the board. I, I uh, have worked in many, many situations where I've gained governing experience. I've worked with different types of, uh, in different types of experiences and boards. And I think that when you get it on, onto a board, you have to respect the fact that there are individual differences. People come with agendas, people come with ideas, and we have to respect that. The ultimate goal is we need to build consensus and we need to have consensus to move forward. And on a board of seven, that means you have to have four people. Uh, so let's all focus on pro identifying situations, issues, whatever, and let's focus on problem solving and, let, and doing that in a collaborative and a functional environment where people are free to bring um, ideas forward. And they may be ideas from individual groups, from what they've heard in the community, and we can get together and problem solve in a collaborative functional way so that we can uh, be outcome based. I don't see a particular problem with that. I know that we've got different personalities, but coming together is an important piece of working for students because that's what we're there for. Well, how is this gonna affect students and what's the outcome gonna be in terms of student learning? So as long as we're focused on those things, I don't think any problems are gonna be foreseeable. Thank you, Charlie. Joel. Can I ask a question? Do you cut us off the mute? Do you mute us automatically or do we have to mute? Uh, I mute. I can mute. Okay. Thanks. Like so. Uh, Joel, you're up. Thanks, Brad. I don't foresee any issues working with the current trustees that are there. Um, I'm very big on relationship building and I pride myself in being able to listen to everyone's opinion. I value what others have to say, even if it's not what I agree with. Um, I currently sit on a volunteer board where on personal views, we differ. But when it comes to the mandate on which we are meant to serve, we agree. We agree to work together. And I feel that's the same with this current school board. Um, we may not always agree on personal things, but when it comes to the students and the parents, and the educational experience for all, I think that I will have no issue with working on any with anybody 
on that. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Holly, you're up. Okay. Um, so as most everybody here has, I've spoken to a bunch of the board members and they were all so welcoming and very kind in their discussion and really seemed like they were eager to work with somebody that was going to be collaborative and really just was passionate about education. Um, for me personally, when I come to the board, I'm going to be a new fresh face. I don't have the political um, drama and stuff in my past. I'm not about any of that. I'm kind. I'm nonpartisan. I don't have another agenda. Kids are my sole focus. And, and that's why I'm here. And so I believe that that will be a, a major asset to the board. Um, when Charlie spoke about the majority vote, I don't think that education should be just trying to achieve four votes. I remember having an Aboriginal presenter in several years ago from my class, and they talked about how um, with the chiefs, often they try to get everybody harmoniously in agreement for the issues that were in front of them. And I think that that's the best way to go, not just try to achieve a majority, but to try to get everybody to feel like they're included in winning and that the outcome is that, that we're still focused on is the kids. And so as long as the kids are winning and everybody can kind of collaborate and bring in all these bits and pieces and we can make something whole from That's all the different seconds. opinions. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. Uh, Alex, you're next. Uh, so I would use the line, we have to stand up against special interest groups, but actually the board that's sitting right now actually is very diverse in where they come from. And I think it has a very good balance. Us libertarians, we are ultimately the best collaborators. We have to work well with all sides of the political spectrum. Uh, we want to make sure that nobody is being left behind. Uh, we need to remember that who actually gives the board its authority. Uh, no, not the provincial legislation, but in fact, it's the voters and more specifically, all residents, uh, participants here in school district 35. And we need to make sure that nobody feels like they're voiceless. So I am going to suggest that I would be a great collaborator and I would work well with others. And I am the candidate that people should represent, have represent them on February 27th. Thank you, Alex. And Grant, you're up. Oh, going you're last, up. I think I've forgotten the question. Candy or Brad, can you repeat the question? I can, yes. <laughs> if elected, how do you foresee your relationship with other trustees on the board? And how would you deal with different personalities and opinions? So um, as I so often found my career, I took a different approach to this. I'd heard that the board was not very functional. So I got myself invited to committee meetings and the board meetings and things that I, a lot of the public doesn't go to. And I sat there as a fly in a wall and watched the board work. And I thought, oh, okay, there are some differences. There are different opinions here, but I can work with these people and I have experience working on boards. So I don't perceive a problem other than I'm gonna be the new kid on the block when I show up, but they're already used to seeing me because I've been showing up and I, perceives that one of the things you have to do is listens. And I've been listening for a couple of months now and longer if you go to the recorded ones. And now I get an opportunity when I'm elected, if I'm elected, to turn around and say, okay, I've been listening, let's talk. It's all about relationships. And I've been working quietly in the background to figure out who these people are so I can work with them. Thank you, Grant. That concludes our general questions for all candidates. We will move on to the specific questions. Candy? Yes, thank you. Okay, so you'll each have 90 seconds to answer questions. And these are individual questions. So um, again, no specific order, um, but we will start with Phyllis. And the first question, is on a recent questionnaire submitted by or to submitted to betterlangley.com you stated the board also has the responsibility of hearing appeals from parents and students 
It is here that my skills will be most useful. Could you please elaborate on this statement? Oh, you're muted. I can do that. Thank you very much. I am a good listener. I've learned to listen well over the many years, and I listen to people's felt needs. Lately, I have been listening and hearing from people. I've been getting messages from parents saying that there's not enough funding. They're worried about their child who has learning disabilities. They don't know what to do, how to go forward without enough. Uh, there aren't enough counselors. I'm hearing from people saying the busing situation needs help. And I feel like I'm a football tossed from one bureaucracy to another. And I'm hearing from teachers saying we don't have enough supplies in our classrooms to do the job. So these are real concerns and they require some funding and but also some common sense. So I'm hearing them already. And I, I feel like if I was able to sit down with any parent, person, child, student, teacher, support worker and listen to them, I go to bat for the one who is hurting. That's just, that's my role in life is to go to bat for the person who needs help like a tiger, like a pit bull, I'll stand for you. Thank you. The next question is for Charlie. As a retired teacher and administrator of SD35, describe how your past experience would help you in the role of trustee on the Board of Education. I think my past experience uh, helps me a great deal in terms of understanding the system. Um, I worked through six different superintendents. Each one of them was different. I've worked through I don't know how many trustees over the years where they've uh, been in, um, in that role. Um, I think I've, I've been able to synthesize the best traits from each of those situations. I've uh, had experience in the budgeting when we use decentralized budgeting. I think that the day-to-day uh, -day interactions I've had with board members, with colleagues, with teachers, with support groups uh, in the school um, has really given me a lot of, um, I guess, can, uh, a lot of tools in my toolkit to be able to go into a role of a trustee understanding what my role is, what the specific job is, and where it lends itself, my strengths lend itself to helping to work it more, work more effectively in the term that's uh, uh, left for this uh, particular segment of uh, until October of 2022. I can, I can bring tool, uh, tools to the board level that I think my experience lends well to. Thank you. Next question is for Joel. In a recent video you, you have posted online, you spoke of the need for more schools in Willoughby. Explain the current process of getting approval for funding to build a new school, and is there a part of the current process that you feel should change? Well, absolutely. So right now, with approval for funding, we have to go through the ministry. The ministry helps buy uh, the land at, well, the school district is, is either one third to 50% of the land and the ministry buys the rest of the land. And then the ministry builds the structure itself. So if you don't mind, can you repeat the second part of the question? Sure. Um, explain the process of, um, just one sentence, explain the current process of getting approval for funding to build a new school? And is there part of the current process that you feel should change? Yeah, so the current process right now, one part that I strongly believe needs to change is our school site acquisition charges. We need to, as a, as a board, we need to work together and decide to raise it to the maximum allowable limit uh, that the province sets. And I would go even as far as what Surrey has done and sent a letter to the Ministry of Education and to the province to increase those maximum allowable limits. Uh, it's just not keeping up with what land prices are right now in the Lower Mainland. Thank you. Over to you, Brad. Thank you, Candy. The next question is for Holly. How does your active teaching career provide a unique advantage or perspective on your role as a trustee? 
my active teaching career, um, I live it daily. I am, I'm in the school system every day. I am working with kids and families every day. And I would be the only person coming to the school board right now who is an active teacher. Um, we have a couple fabulous people that have retired. Um, we have some amazing SEA folk and people that are supporting different um, parts of social services um, that are on the board and they're, they're amazing. But right now I'm in the trenches with the people day to day and with COVID and all the changes that have happened in the last year, I, I can't stress to the board how important that is. Um, it's it's a different world from when I started teaching to now. It's it's completely a different world with having to put everything online and with cutbacks, even with Langley's newest budget for photocopying when we don't have the textbooks in the class and we've got cutbacks on photocopying, how do we get those resources out to the kids? And I feel like those perspectives are something that I can bring to the current board and, and really kind of help guide them in their decision making. Thank you, Holly. Alex. <clears throat> As a self-proclaimed and experienced libertarian candidate, which you also referred to just earlier, how do you see those values benefiting stakeholders as a trustee on the board? Obviously, uh, the one I've leaned on heavily in my campaign so far is fiscal responsibility. Uh, I really feel that the attitude is, well, if we need more funding, ask for more funding. And people forget that that comes from, you know, the fruits of everyone's labor, taxpayers. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to hold our ground and we need to find better efficiencies within the funding that we already have. Uh, I, I hear Joel's message uh, needing to increase school site charges. They're already tied to a really great formula. Unfortunately, that formula depended on really good forecasting of future school needs, and that hasn't been done well. So that's something that needs to be done. Uh, I have no problem supporting public education. My son is a member of it. He's benefited from it. He he's thriving. Uh, my big concern as a libertarian is that people are being taken advantage of and they are forced into the system that they have no say in, and we really need to make sure that everyone has a voice. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Grant, next question is for you. You have lengthy, a lengthy experience as an accountant here in Langley. How has this experience prepared you for a trustee position? Oh, wonderful question. So a trustee position is a government's position. And as an accountant, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is we're not form fillers. We don't do the tax returns in the malls. We're actually part of the leadership of every one of our clients if we're actually very good at our jobs. And so I have sat on boards and guided clients in both roles. And what I see the school board is, is a, a unique blend of a financially responsible organization and a socially responsible organization. And that's where I can come in and say, okay, let's make those two things work well together. Because in my experience as a, as a business owner and as a guide for many people who've had businesses in Langley, who have expanded them around the world, it, how do you make those social and financial interactions work? Thank you. Okay, um, my turn now to ask a question. Um, next question is for Stacy. You are active on social media and more so than some candidates here this evening. What role do you feel that social media plays in the role of an elected official? And what are the pros and cons of social media for elected officials? This is a great question. Thank you. So we know that social media is 
It's good and bad. So definitely, I would assume for someone that is an elected official, it is an incredible communication tool. We know that a lot of people are on social media. It's a way to really boost um, transparency and communicate about processes and um, and engage with, with people in the community that you are representing. So those are all some really great um, attributes of social media. It's also a realm that has often takes an ugly turn because there is very little accountability. And I believe that, um, you know, it, it, there is no room for online bullying, but there is room for um, conversation and there's often tough conversation. And when you are in a community and you're not feeling that you are being represented, it is an opportunity to engage with um, those that are elected to serve you. Um, it's a fine, it's a balancing act and it always has to be respectable and, um, and that are, those are my views. Thank you. Thank you. That was perfectly a minute and a half. Um, okay, next question. Sorry, I've just lost my place here. Um, is for Phyllis. How do you believe your role as a trustee is in, in, is involved in finding the balance between student safety and student learning? Thank you again for that wonderful question. The balance between student safety and student learning. It's a tr very tricky question right now in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So we have to uh, recognize that, let's talk about safety and let's talk about, I don't know which direction you wanna go, but I'm going down here. Let's talk about face coverings, for example. Many teachers are pushing for students to be wearing face coverings. However, I would be against that in the lower grades especially the younger elementary age, because students, children are going to be affected lifelong from this whole idea of not seeing people's faces. Young children need to be able to see expressions, they're learning language, they're learning linguistics and understanding what people mean when they talk and they gain a lot of that from facial expression. So that's an example of where I would really want to weigh my decision on the, the health of the child's future and their development. So that's the balance there. If you're talking about other areas of physical safety, I'm sure we can balance physical safety and learning without any problem. So I, I think you might've been talking about health safety and COVID safety. So I'm gonna go there. Studies show that uh, in, the, in Canada, there are 8,100,000 people under the age of 20 and there have been five deaths and that does not exclude comorbidities. So, we are not talking about a danger to children in this. That's 90 seconds, Phyllis. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question is for Charlie. Yeah, I'm Candy. Just hey. I hate I hate to yeah. it, it butt in here, but um can are people allowed to comment? I got a, a text here from someone that says they uh cannot comment as viewers, uh, which Brad was earlier, right at the beginning, asking uh, people to do. I don't know if that's changed, if Brad's fixed I'm that or not. I'm seeing comments pop up. I okay. have it over on my screen. We're not okay. really taking questions from the floor, just with no, our phone it was just up, something but... that came. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Go. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Charlie, with regards to the rapid growth in Willoughby, and the subsequent, subsequent shortage of classroom space, insufficient sidewalks, and excessive traffic in the area. Will you, and if so, how will you advocate for Willoughby students to ensure their safety? Well, thank you. Uh, good question. Um, it, we, we all know that Willoughby's, a bit, Willoughby's expanding um, and the, the, the growth piece there. Um, advocacy for their uh, for students and student safety, I think it uh, begins uh, with a very robust uh, um, liaison committee, which I sat on and co-chaired for six and plus years, um, because that's where we as a trustee uh, representation with a council representation with senior staff from both groups can sit down and talk about these issues. Um, obviously, the township in their planning and so on and so forth 
their budgeting, they have to prioritize. Um, and with the school district, infrastructure is not one of the things that we look at, we can only advocate for. It. So we have to become the advocates for that kind of improvements, those kinds of issues. Shortage of classrooms, again, that's the capital plan. Again, that's engaging the ministry, engaging the one element that people have forgotten or didn't know, and that treasury board, because they're the ones that hold the purse strings actually through the ministry. So we have to advocate for, for schools uh, through the appropriate channels. And if we have an appropriate liaison committee, as we did uh, when I was there, <clears throat> we can advocate together because we can both go to see our MLA. We can both go to see um, uh, when, like for example, a BCSTA, um, which unfortunately isn't quite the same as it used to be. But as BCSTA members, we can uh, advocate right directly with the ministry about our Thank needs. Thank you, Charlie. That's 90 seconds. Thank you. Yep. Okay, over to you, I believe, Brad. Or am I? Oh, no, I have one more question. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, next question is for Joel. How do you answer critics that suggest you should have more experience with the local school system before being elected for a trustee position? Well, I think you'd have to define what is more experience in the local school district system. Um, I am a volunteer and I donate to the Fort Langley uh, breakfast program and I, the current volunteer board um, I sit on, we donate uh, or we do the scholarship to Langley students. And I firmly believe that not, not every school district is the same, but my experience as coaching football and rugby in Abbotsford and in Surrey through this uh, charitable society, delivering the nutritional breakfasts and snacks and sitting uh, on the committee of the Ignited Dream uh, scholarship for students who um, need to, sorry, for students that have gone through an adversity in their life. That's experience to me. And every student matters, every child matters to me. And it's not just Langley specifically, but obviously as a, as a trustee, uh, Langley students and their families would be my top priority. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, over to you now, Brad. Now it's my turn. Holly, the next question is for you. There are currently two teachers on the school board. If elected, you would be the third. Do you believe this may, may lead to a lack of balance on the board? And also, do you foresee any circumstances where there may be a conflict of interest as a current teacher? Mute. Okay, so yes, there are two retired teachers on the board and they are both absolutely fabulous human beings. We also have somebody that was in an SCA position. We have somebody that works currently in social work. Um, we have a lot of advocates for students and that's what I'm really here for. I'm here to advocate for the students. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with being a teacher. I think it just has to be, it has to do with people that are here and are passionate and education is their life. As I've said in some of the questionnaires that I've answered, this is not my, my full stop. If I don't get in on this election, I'm running again in 2022. This was an opportunity for me to run. Um, so I took it, but I will be back in 2022 running for the school board again because education is, is my life. When I do have to recuse myself, which there will be times when it comes up with a contract, I will do so gracefully and I will go and I will work on in the sidelines while they're having conversations about contracts, et cetera. I'll work on the sidelines on other passion projects and committees and, and boards that I join because I've, I'm allowed that extra hour, hour and a half, two hours during a board meeting when we have contracts come up every three to four years. So I don't see it as being a big, a big conflict of interest. It's no more of a conflict of interest as a parent. Like some kind of Thank you. Okay, Thank you, Holly. Alex, the next question is for you. And along the same lines, similar lines as the, as the previous question. 
the Libertarian Party of BC's platform, and this would be the provincial platform, I believe, uh, this where this question came from, advocates for more choice in the education system and for funding to, quote, follow the child. Do you agree? And please explain what this could mean to you. At the school board level, uh, we heavily, heavily represent the public school system. Uh, the public schools uh, are not the only beneficiaries of public funding. However, independent schools, depending on which group they belong to, could get up to 35% funding as well. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of all learning opportunities, whether that be through the public school system, distributed learning, uh, you know, the online learning, or, uh, or independent schools or homeschooling. These are all great options, but at the school board level, we don't have a lot of say over a lot of those other school choices. So, while at the provincial level, I might advocate for something else, here at the school trustee level, I will say that I will make sure that each school provides great choice and then each parent and family child will have the opportunity to attend whatever school that meets their needs. Thank you, Alex. Grant, the next question is for you. On Facebook, you recently admitted that Facebook is not your strong suit, if you recall. <laughs> How do you plan to connect with stakeholders who engage primarily on social media? Oh, great calling me out. Yes. <laughs> um, so clearly I have something to learn and uh, Facebook is not my favorite medium, mostly because it's, um, it's very fast and quick with not a lot of considered thought. And if you consider who I am and where I come from, everything I do has considered thought to it. And what do you want in a school board? You don't want fast and quick and off the cuff. You want a proper considered thought. So the thing I'm gonna do with Facebook is I'm just gonna slow it down. I will still reply to everybody who asks me a question, and I have been, and I will still involve myself in the discussion, but I'm not gonna be the off the cuff, spit something out kind of guy that you're gonna find um, perhaps somebody getting a foot in their mouth during, during Facebook. I'm going to be thoughtful and considered in my responses, and I'm going to learn how to use the tool. Thank you, Grant. Over to you, Candy, for the last question. Thank you. <clears throat> last question is for Stacy. Stacy, you have recently released a video on social media regarding walk limits and busing within the DW Poppy catchment area. Can you please explain how busing is funded to districts? And also where would you look to cut to reduce walk limits for busing to students? Mm -hmm. So I did, um, I did engage in a walk recently because I did receive some emails from parents and I will admit, I wasn't overly familiar with the route that they were talking about. So I did um, go on this route and it was, it was, um, it was scary. And so I have looked into this. I know that um, there is a very small pot of money for busing. It comes, it is given, um, to the district by the ministry. And I know I have had conversations with the superintendent who was very kind to, to talk to me recently. I understand that um, if we change the limits, we are going to have to consider changing throughout the district. There are issues with lack of sidewalks and um, many issues of safety. So what I would like to see is um, an efficiency study to make sure that we are using our buses in the most efficient manner, our routes the most efficient. And I also think that we have to engage with the township. If routes are unsafe and we are expecting kids to walk them, we have to work together and um, make them safer for students. And at the end of the day, that is a priority. Um, That's your 90 seconds, okay. Stacey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all the candidates for returning with some of those great answers. We're gonna head into the closing remarks now. You'll have one minute each. 
We'll start with Charlie and we'll move to Joel and Holly after that. So I'll give you a moment to prepare. So again, one minute of closing remarks, anything that you would like to say to uh, potential voters. Charlie, you're up. Okay, thanks. Thank you to Brad and Candy. Awesome job. Thank you for your moderating. Thank you for the questions. I think it was very informative. Um, I'm gonna leave you with a few thoughts here. Uh, students first, student learning first, student programs first. I have a passion, passion for working with youth, passion for the education, education for all, everybody. Everybody needs to be treated fairly and inclusivity. I'm passionate for my community, 47 and a half years of doing that and volunteering and making a difference. 10,000 uh, backpacks working well, actually over 11,000 now working towards 12,000. And last year, lastly, my knowledge, my knowledge of the system, my experience with governance. I think I can be a, a trustee that comes on the board and gives immediately uh, and works positively towards a good working and collaborative trustee system. Thank you, Charlie. Joel, you have one minute. Absolutely, thank you, Brad. Um, I did a video on social media the other day uh, highlighting the absolute joke that Willoughby is uh, when it comes to infrastructure. And if there have been committees in the past, I feel that they could have done a better job. Um, we need to advocate for the parents and the students so that they can get to school safely. If it is not addressed now, then it's gonna be an issue in Brookswood and everywhere else where community plans are put in place. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Holly, you have one minute. Okay. So as I look back at my answers, I'm a little frustrated because it's so hard to articulate my passions in 90 seconds. I also laugh because as a progressive educator, I don't ask my kids these kind of on the spot questions because I know how anxiety causing it is. Um, people freeze, they don't always get the best answers under pressure. So I'd like to tell all the rest of the candidates, I see you, you sound great, you all did amazing. Um, at this point in time, I truly believe that I'm the right person at the right time. Thinking back to the questions about working with the board, um, one of my supporters, wrote this on Facebook and I think it sums me up. When I think of Holly, what pops into my mind is how she's always brought people together. Whether it's food drives, Christmas campers, or help for those in need, she's always been there for people. She supports what and who she cares about. So I hope to meet many new and familiar faces during this campaign and would be humbled if you would support me on my journey. And if my journey doesn't start on February 27th, I'll see you in 2022. Thank you, Holly. Alex, you're next. One minute. We have to be very careful of uh, asking for more taxpayer money uh, to fund our schools. Uh, we can't take so much that families won't have enough to contribute to their local PACs, which are already a great way to tailor make uh, funding for the needs of each community and school. Uh, we can't take from the families uh, in favor of special interest groups like educators who definitely have their own stake in the game. Uh, we need to encourage and enable our school administrators to adapt their school's programs and offerings uh, to the best uh, that they're of the needs of their schools. Uh, real school choice has to mean something. The board has already extended school choice priority to all First Nation students. I wanna give that to all Langley parents. The catchment system got a reform 20 years ago. It saved a lot of schools, creating fine arts programs and fundamental. It's time that we go back to that well and reform the catchment system again. Uh, and that's gonna help us fix the middle school dilemma, which of course is something that hasn't even come up tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Grant, you're next. You have one minute, closing remarks. Find your button. There we are. Okay. So thank you, Brad. Thank you, Candy, for putting this together. Thank you, the viewers who I can't see who are watching us all and making their choices. So as an accountant, I will contribute a unique perspective to the board that I feel is critical in the tight fiscal years ahead. 
And as an experienced leader, I will join the leadership of the board in finding, responding to new challenges we have. COVID is testing us and teaching us how to adapt. As a successful retired business owner, I know the importance of good financial management and being able to pivot when things need to change. So everybody who's watching, get out there and vote on the 27th. Thank you, Brad and Candy again. Thank you, Grant. Stacy, your one minute. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to everyone that was here tonight. I am running because I am passionate about public education. I know it is a complicated system and I will, I'm ready to hit the ground running. Student-centered, that describes what I'm all about. We have to focus on a variety of issues, mental wellness, recovery during after COVID, um, including inclusion and um, supporting diversity in this district. I am not a one issue candidate. I am here to do the hard work and I'm asking for your vote on February 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. And finally, Phyllis, your one minute is up. I am glad that the school board is a nonpartisan position. I have gained strong support in this election from all across the political spectrum. I'm happy for that. I have no agenda except to serve this community. I do not seek this position to increase my sense of power nor to jump to another political position. This is the right place for me to serve. I've studied education for years and love learning, love kids, feel for parents, respect teachers and support workers. This is the right time for me to serve. I am free now to devote my time, thoughts, and energy into keeping Langley schools strong. I am the right person to serve, thoughtful, compassionate, logical, compatible with coworkers, hardworking, able to balance competing needs. Please do give me the honor of, of, and give me your vote. If you have questions and comments, please go to phyllisetmer.com and uh, address them there. I'm up for it, I have experience, as Holly said, I am passionate and education is my life. I am ready to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis, and thank you to all the candidates. I also wanna thank all of our viewers. Um, we do see your comments. I couldn't get to them. I saw a few comments that I did just, uh, I just wanted to make clear that we are recording this. This will be recorded and posted on the talk language talklangley.com Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel. There is one, uh, I don't think it has any followers. We just started it. Uh, so please uh, do, do uh, check that out if you like to um, return back to this video. I um, also wanna thank my co-host, Candy Ashdown. I want to thank uh, our MLA, uh, Megan Dykeman for her opening remarks. And uh, please go out and vote. We uh, did have some, some uh, pre-voting time. Uh, the advanced voting poll was today in Aldergrove. Uh, I believe it is tomorrow. Uh, there is advanced polling in uh, Willoughby and in Walnut Grove the next day. So if you want advanced voting, there's some chances there. You've now heard from all of your candidates. And then of course on the 27th. Candy, do you have any uh, closing remarks? Um, just like to thank you all again for, <clears throat> for being here. I know it's difficult to, I've been there to put yourself out in front of so many people and all candidates meetings, they're very nerve wracking and, and I've done quite a few of them and, and know firsthand. So I just thank you all so much for being here and, and, um, and I can tell that you're all passionate in different ways about public education and, and our students in the district. And I wish you all the best and um, look forward to watching you over the next um, little while before the election and, and all the best to you and take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Good luck. Vote Fox. You, <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Oh. Might as well say. Thanks guys. <laughs> Good night everybody. Good night. Hey, candidates, candidates, can you stay on for a minute?